Psalm 14, first of all, he says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. He has a word for people like that, fool, if you're going to say that there is no God. It has disastrous consequences, that kind of a belief. Second thing, he says, to the evolutionists, I believe he'd say something like he said to Job in Job 38. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far you shall come, and no further, and here shall your proud ways be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place? Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. The point is, is the evolutionary scientists weren't there when God created the world. Now, we're not speaking poorly about scientists. A lot of you are scientists, NASA scientists. But there's a two different types of science. There's one called empirical science, which you guys are familiar with. It puts men on the moon. You can put it in a laboratory. You can test it. You can see if it fails. You can make it better until it works and it succeeds. That's empirical science, no problem. The other type, evolutionary science, is forensic science, like a detective. You weren't there, you have a couple of clues laying around, and you try to form some hypothesis and speculate how it all went together. The trouble is, as God says, you were not there. And scientists themselves know that the Earth spun at a different speed in ancient times. The magnetic poles have gone all over the place and been in different places. You've had ice ages. You've had all kinds of different things happening. All we have is some recent data, and they're speculating, going into the past, that Everything was constant as it is today, and therefore we can make our calculations. But this is forensic science, and you end up with basing a lot on assumptions, reaching erroneous and faulty conclusions. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth, says the Lord? Tell me, for you are old and you were born then. So let's talk then about a little bit about speculation, about what's being taught to our children and to us. The popular present view of evolution was started by Charles Darwin, a British scientist, made it popular in his book, The Origin of the Species, which came out in 1859. And in there, he put forward his theory of evolution. And he talks about how North American black bears were known to catch insects by swimming in the water with their mouths open. And Darwin, being a good scientist of this forensic science, said, speculates how Black bears can become whales. What did he say? And I'll quote Darwin to you, okay? Quote, he says, I can see no difficulty in a race of bears being rendered by natural selection more aquatic in their structure and habits, with larger and larger mouths till a creature was produced as monstrous in a whale, as a whale. So what does the father of evolution say? You got a whale in the water. I'm oh, sorry, you got a bear in the water. His mouth is a little bit bigger than the other ones. Therefore, he can catch more insects. Therefore, the girl bears think he's hot. He survives better than the other bears. They have little bear babies with bigger mouths. They pass on more mutations and eventually get a whale. <laughs> Is this what we want to be basing our teaching and belief of the end, of the beginning of the world upon? This kind of science? This is the father, straight from the horse's mouth, or from the whale's mouth, or the bear's mouth, if you will. Now, there's an article, well, actually, Darwin removed this section from his book because it was so ridiculed. People were like, that's ridiculous. And so he took it out of later editions. And then one scientist article I read, trying to make up for this, says, scientists now know, notice, they now know that Darwin had the right idea, but the wrong animal. <laughs> Instead of looking at bears, he should have been looking at cows or hippopotamuses. So I can just picture this. Here's Joe Cow. <laughs> you know, walking along to the pasture, little baby cow Joe is born, and oh my goodness, his hooves look a little bit more like flippers. So he's <laughs> flopping around. Everybody made fun of poor little Joe cow because he can't walk very well. But then a flash flood comes. He swims a little bit better than the other ones. The other bit, the other cows drown. The girl cows think 
The man with the flippers is kind of hot. They have little baby cows, calves with little flippers, and eventually get a whale. If you think I'm joking about this, which in a sense I'm, I'm making a little fun of it, but let me read to you then an actual article from CBS Evening News, December 20th, 2007, says, tiny deer may have spawned mighty whales. Evolutionists, here, those who teach your children. The gigantic ocean whale may have evolved from a land animal the size of a small raccoon, new research suggests. For years, the hippo has been the leading candidate. Some scientists were skeptical of the new hypothesis by an Ohio anatomy professor, notice who it's coming from, uh, he published, published it in the Journal of Nature. Uh, he says, newer fossils point to the deer-like Idohias, this little thing right here. That might have been the whale. As a zoo animal, it looks nothing like a whale, the Wisson said. But he added, when it comes to anatomical features, the Idohias is quite like one, quite strikingly like one. And he says, the key finding connecting Idohias to the whale is its thickened ear bone, something only seen in cetaceans and whales. An examination of its teeth showed that the land-dwelling creature spent a lot of times in the water and may have fed there, like hippos or whales. Thus, he concludes that this little, it says, rodent, the earliest whales didn't look like whales at all. It looked like a cross between a pig and a dog. That is a university professor teaching in forensic science, speculating about things where he wasn't there, about a creature he found that he claims is 48 million years old. And why is it like a whale? Because its ear is similar to that of, ear, of the ears of whales. To a Christian, you know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like that the similarity in ears points to a common creator who happens to use the same wisdom in different creatures that he created. And so, we remember Jesus' words, I thank thee, Father, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to babes. Yea, Father, for such was thy gracious will. So, what, is, what else does God want to tell us today? I believe the Lord wants to also say this. I want you to know, my children, as crazy as this sounds, this is the world you live in. These are the people who are teaching your children. These are the people who are trying to teach you. And it is then obvious that you're going to be different from the world. And there's obvious, also obvious, you're definitely going to have tension with the world. And you know that the world's law is pretty much evolution these days? If you go back to earlier America, 1925, the Scopes trial, the state of Tennessee versus John Scopes, the man Scopes was charged with teaching evolution in school, and he was found guilty. My, how far we've gone. In 1987, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that public schools can't teach creation science, can't teach that there is a God who created the world. It's against the law. Darwinian, Darwinian evolution alone has free course to be taught. And just think about how far this has gone. 2005, a federal judge in Georgia, Georgia ordered Cobb County school officials to remove stickers that had been placed in student textbooks that called the theory of evolution a theory, and not a fact. In 2008, the Brevard County Schools, after a board vote, said Brevard students will continue.